name is Kulavinder and you are watching me on Desi Blitz. DesiBlitz.com Kulavinder, thank you so much for joining us today at the Desi Blitz Literature Festival. Uh, before we move on to Goodness Gracious Me, I actually wanted to find out more about how you got into this industry in the first place. What, what sparked you growing up? What kind of upbringing did you have of Bollywood, Bhangra, like what was it? How long have you got? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, there was humour in my family anyway, you know, uh, it was one thing that really kept us alive at that particular time in the 70s growing up in Britain, England. Um, and then I think it sort of progressed uh, from imitating the teachers and where my teacher, English teacher turned around to me and said, do you do famous people? Do you imitate famous people? And I was about 10 years old then. And I said, uh, I better go away and do some famous people for her. And then I started doing impressions. Uh, and then I went into a talent competition when I was 11 at City Varieties in Leeds. Uh, and out of uh, 500 children from the north, I came in third. Uh, I wrote my four minute piece uh, and then within a blink of an eye 40 years have gone by in that respect uh, I wanted to pursue that career uh, I went to drama school then and then a different world opened up for me on a literal sense uh, where I got to know more about Shakespeare, Chekhov, Stoppard, Griffiths all these writers as much as contemporary plays and but culturally we were still spoke Punjabi at home we were watching Bollywood films at home and uh, listening to Pangra, uh, Channi at that time, Alap, Heed, Hira, the group. So you were, you were kind of involved within that community. So you were getting all these different influences at that particular age coming in. television sadly there was no role models that you can look at because there was no Asian i.e. comedians that were playing so you could only relate to the ones that they were on television at that time uh, which was people like Tommy Cooper or um, there was Frank Spencer as m much as on the Bollywood side a lot of influence was done from uh, uh, an Indian sort of uh, film uh, Johnny Walker where I based one of the characters in Goodness Gracious Me from, uh, one of the, he, that look of the Coopers. So it started at a very young age. Then uh, coming to London, uh, going to drama school, telling my parents it was further education. And it was, <laughs> you know, it was, you know, uh, to go and do my HND, which is now equivalent to a degree now, you know that, you know, so, um, uh, and, uh, and that lovely thing of having that independence away from your family as well. And when I was in London, I was doing Warm Up Man for LWT. So in one respect, yes, it was East and I, but then I carried on with the comedy, but uh, the, the strength came in as well doing the drama. The acting came in strong. You know, a lot of people talk about the beauty of the Kathmandu Northern Express. The journey across the roof of the world. Others speak in awe of the Assam flyer weaving through the magical mist of the Darjeeling tea terraces. But for me, the most romantic train journey is the one I've travelled halfway across the world to experience the LTS commuter line from Fenchurch Street to South End. <laughs> and then what was it like when you got the the call or the call up for goodness gracious me how, how did that all come about do you know uh the call up actually happened through the real mccoy i used to do an act uh, uh of a bollywood star and i used to just do it as a, a party gag within within friends uh, and until uh, mira saw that 
uh, and at the same time uh, Mira and Gurinder Chadar at that particular time wanted to open up a comedy store group at Tara Arts uh, and uh, but Mira got involved with the um, the real McCoy and asked if I would come and do that sketch uh, literally chunky la funga uh, and after that I went to do one sketch and ended up doing four four years at the real McCoy and then uh, the young writers on there which was Anil Gupta and Sarat Sadana and Richard Pinto was working on the real McCoy and when that came to a fruition they went over to the BBC uh, Mr John Plowman and asked would they be interested in, in an Asian sketch show um, so, and the opportunity arose where John Plowman said, are Asians funny? And that's where you turn around and said, well, there's only one way to find out. So we got together uh, uh, and then we went to see Nina in a show called Do You Eat With Your Fingers? And prior to that, I'd worked with Nina, I knew of Nina. and went to see uh, Sanjeev at the Waterman's Theatre with Nit and Sawney doing their double act. Ah, quite right. Uh, what is he finishing? <laughs> she is finishing potty training. She's almost three. The English don't like to keep our children clinging to our apron strings, you know. Quite right. That's why we sent our youngest boy off to Rodin when he was only two. Rodin? Isn't that a girl's school? Well, he got in. <laughs> We got together and started exchanging our stories uh, and putting those sketches together. We put it on at the riverside and, and we had these television people come and see it, Channel 4 and BBC. Uh, Channel 4 thought it was a bit ahead of its time and BBC thought, oh, we don't know, maybe we'll put you into radio. Uh, and, it, and that was really good for us in one sense, that it gave us an opportunity to work on more material. Uh, and then uh, when it won the Sony Awards on there, they had to, in one sense, give us a pilot. <laughs> so uh, it, it sort of, the programme slowly, slowly progressed. It wasn't, they turned around and said, here, would you like to do this? It was definitely a, a direction that it was needed and it was crying out for it uh, and uh, our producer in that sense Anil Gupta was fantastic in that and carried on pursuing that uh, until we got the opportunity to actually get six episodes. I think it's time for me to go native and attempt a little bartering. I say what you're selling Mike? Crack. You have some tea. <laughs> He's selling crack! <laughs> and what, what was that in terms of doing the sketches, reading the scripts, reading the lines that you would do, um, exchanging ideas between all of you? How was it to finally see that on screen? Um, it was great because, you know, they're your stories, your parents' stories, there are stories. All they needed to do was to be liberated so uh, that, was, that was the reason why there was so much material there and so much was needed to be said from our point of view so uh, that, that opportunity came about to work on those stories and to start putting them on, down on paper and to play to improvise and to have that joy because at that time we got stuck in this horrible place of controversy that anything Asian was controversial uh, and we had lost that sense of humour that we know, you know, within our family, within our culture how much that kind of, kind of uh, brings us together when we get, go to a wedding or when we have parties or when we sit amongst our family how much humour that we share uh, and that literally was like working on Goodness Gracious Me. As a family, we sat there and started to share these stories. I 
I was going to say, was it, was it like as if it wasn't just an, an acting job where you were there to play a role, it was kind of, as you said, like a family or when you go to a wedding and you're sat around a table, like, you know, having jokes, bantering people and it was that same kind of aura around. It was that, you know, and that's all right. Because then again, you know, you, you come from a creative background. It, it, it wasn't like it happened instantly. You learned a craft. I went to drama school, so I knew, you knew how to kind of put things down. You knew, you knew timing. Fair enough, you can't teach timing. No, you can't. <laughs> you see? So you're dealing with a different type of ether then, a different type of quality in, 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 in making program. Um, so, uh, yes, so it's not blatant. It's not just done. A lot of work goes in from everyone that joins this ensemble. And that was the joy that everyone was on it. Everyone was in there as much as the cameraman, as much as the writers, as the costume department, they got it. And they knew that we were on this kind of unique program that's on, on a creative sense. India, a country full of contradictions, where state-of-the-art technology sits side by side with abject poverty. Where cows are a protected species, but lepers are not. Where the... Yes, what? Television? Yes. BBC? <laughs> yes. Mark Tali? Well, no, act actually, I'm not. Hey, <laughs> Mark Tali! <laughs> You, you played a range of characters, you know, all of them funny in their own sense, but which one was your particular favourite to play and, and why? Wow, you know, uh, there are so many favourites. There's not never one, you know. Uh, the immediacy comes to me, the Coopers themselves, only because all four of us were in there as well. So there was a lot of play in that, uh, within those characters. As much as I enjoy Chunky, the from Buoyancy Bangra Man, you know, uh, again, to create a superhero who's a plumber and yet a plumber during the day and a bangra man during, during the who saves the world. Uh, you had, the, there were so many diverse characters for you to play with. And there's little minuets of sketches, you know, uh, like Top Gear, great sketch, you know, which is much as about, you know, uh, an Asian family trying to get into a car, how many you can get in the car, but actually the subplot on that is about gender and how that you can get a little kind of look into a life of, of, of this little family and how they deal with, you know, uh, because it's, it's really Nina ends up really doing everything in that sketch. <laughs> but, I say, Shashi, Veena and Sarjeet are here. It's not Shashi, it's Charlotte, and for God's sake, get their names right. Okay, 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 calm down. I know what I am doing. <clears throat> uh, Sarjeet! <laughs> One of my um, favourite sketches, probably of all time, is when uh, all of you were in the restaurant and you're ordering yeah. um, food and, you know, you're saying what's the blandest thing on the menu and, yeah. you know, it's that reverse um, characteristics that you play and yeah. were those, obviously I find it funny all the time, but for you guys playing those roles or watching it back, was it hard to get through these sketches and you're just laughing your head off all the time? There was that. You know, you can't, because like, he, like I said earlier, you know, when your family sits down and you start sharing that humour and someone else picks the baton and someone else picks another part of the story, it was very much like working like that. And that story, that particular sketch is, uh, is perfect because it really does turn the tables. And we do that a couple of times with many of the sketches in Goodness Gracious Me, is to put on other people's shoes and say, and it gives the idea to the community out there the whole community, not just our community. We know what's going on. We know where we are. We're not that naive. We're on it. And we're not that different either.
what was the do you think the show was um you mentioned before ahead of its time but a trailblazer in terms of shining a light on what british asians were going through at that time definitely uh definitely it was uh we needed a voice uh, and sometimes humor is the best way it had empathy in it it had sensitivity in it it had humor in it it was a celebration within itself and it wasn't in any form of yes sometimes to to create you have to be angry because you you're you're frustrated with the world itself you're looking for the equality and yet you know to to bring that humor in and celebrate it in that form what catches on on tv and we laugh our heads off but what was your favorite moment behind the scenes getting to know the your 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 ensemble the people that you work with in anything i love what i do i really do enjoy it i haven't done anything else i'm not part time in that respect i'm not a part timer this is all i've done this is how i've made my living and been able to have two children and a mortgage you know so in one respect uh, the people that you've met the creative people that you 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 been working with and being involved with and each time you keep on moving on to a new family a different job different people you know there was one time in a year that i've had four wives and 15 children <laughs> so you know it's consistent in that way where it, 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 as as doing this work as an actor uh, it allows me to be anything i want in any gender there's no it's like working on a blank canvas the colors i can use for that canvas is up to me uh it doesn't it, it, there's no judgment in it either you know it's not undermining and that's that's the joy i find in this work How do you how do you feel about you know the show is celebrating you know 25 years uh, plus but how does that resonate with you that the show still has this longevity and still has the impact that it initially had you know good writing will stand its time good work will will live on and uh, with this program now it's been 25 years since we last it was screened on TV in that respect but it's influenced many a pe person if not a new generation today picking it up and it carries on doing that and uh, and it's something i'm quite humbled with as well and quite kind of um nicely happy because uh, you feel that the sweat is off the brow a little bit because there's no pressure of but not i'm not saying that's where it stops that's but that's where it actually starts is to do something else again and again and again but with that particular program after i think the first season you felt this has really made a mark within our community when i say within our community i don't only mean the asian community our whole community as a british community because that's what we are we're british and we're here to stay and we're here to kind of evolve and be progressive with it that's the new britain we're looking at as much as the colonial past there is we'll take that on board what our history is but we want to create a progressive country now that looks forward and that has empathy that has an openness about it that has a generosity about inviting other people to it because these stories are the immigrant stories when our fathers came here when our parents came here and uh, we had goodness gracious me gave it a, gave them a voice and a clever voice at that because it wasn't necessarily fighting on the streets it was actually fighting in a clever way with wit garden slopes upwards <laughs> you live in a flat oh. <laughs> look i'm gay okay and so am i what both of you 
Oh my God, my son is a lesbian. You go to your room and don't come back until you're not of the gay. Simon is my life partner. We have... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, could you, in your best character voice, whichever character you choose, can you um, say your favourite quote or one of your favourite quotes from, from the show? I, I, I always end up sometimes... I do like the quote, that thing you do with your hands. Very bad. <laughs> you know? Uh, obviously, uh, there's always the one from, I knew that. Uh, you know? Hello, sweetie, darling. From there's so many. That's the nice thing about that. You know, you can't pick one. Uh, there's so that program is, for myself was so vast in that. So much fun. Food. Yeah. Well, I've done a series of easy to prepare meals to fit in with our readers' Sorry. modern. And just as a, as a last question, how does it feel to be part of the Desi Blitz Literature Festival? Oh, it's great, you know, and it's fantastic to be celebrating on a literal sense. And obviously when we get on stage, we've got, you know, Sanjeev Kohli here with us, who's one of the, the writers on the programme. And Sanjeev will tell you, or I can tell you, tell you for him, that his sketch was the first sketch that went out on episode one. There you go. Thank you, Junuthan. <laughs> <laughs> Look, just kill them, will you? I cannot kill them. But if you insist on death, I could try something. But it is an extreme measure. What is it? Well, I can create a very oppressive political regime under your cooker. Hmm? In which will say, ah, you that that of Cblitz.com